You look kind of uh, weak and puny, but I think you'll pull through. Thank you, sir. Great chap. I wish we had more like him at Annapolis. Yes, sir. Too bad this is his last year. You'll make a grand naval officer. Grounds in New York City. Witness this great game between the Army and Navy. Stands are packed, big groups running all over the place, and all eyes are on Fresh Morgan, captain of the Navy. Double wing back. Smith is back. With the ball pass from center, it goes to Smith. It's reversed to Corrigan. Corrigan hits, hits over his own right tackle. He hits the fullback, knocks him down. Wait a minute, it's boxed in. Craig and Reynolds are coming in. He hits Craig, he clocks him over, straight out Reynolds, and he's across for a touchdown. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Crash Murray, and captain of the Navy team, playing the finest game of his career. Wait a minute, son. What do you want? I gotta see Lieutenant Corrigan right away. You can't go in there. It's against orders. But I tell you, I gotta see him. It's important. Even if I let you in, you couldn't talk to the lieutenant now. He's busy. All right. <laughs> What were you doing up there? Dad sent me over to get you, but they wouldn't let me in. Has he had another earthquake warning? Yeah, he wants you to come right over. Well, wait until I get into my clothes. I'm going over to Professor Norton's laboratory. Very well, Crash. What you say is very interesting, Professor Norton. But I still can't believe that this little machine can predict earthquakes. Not only predicts, but prevents them. If I could get close enough to the source. Oh, there you are, Lieutenant. The signals are coming in much stronger. Oh, I beg your pardon. And uh, this is Miss Compton, staff writer of the time. Oh, everybody knows Crash Corrigan.
That was the signal again. They've been sending it every five minutes. They? Just whom do you mean by they? Professor Norton maintains that these signals must be the work of some human agency, apparently coming from the bottom of the ocean. I hope you're not going to spring that fantastic yarn about the lost continent of Atlantis. Exactly. Only now I have some definite evidence. This is pure auric talcum, a metal made by fusing gold and copper. The secret of this process was lost with the Atlanteans. What does that prove? Well, according to every test, the idol couldn't be more than a couple of years old, something made recently. I found it during a recent trip I made in my rocket submarine in, uh, in this general location. And this is where the ancient continent of Atlantis was reported to have sunk thousands of years ago. Contrary to popular belief, Atlantis did not sink overnight, but during a period of years. During this time, the people had ample opportunity to construct a roof of auricalcum over the city and keep out the ocean waves. Thus, Atlantis, though lost, still lived. <laughs> But your holiness, Unger Khan's men are at the gates. I beg of you to take safety in the citadel. Poseidon, god of Atlantis, has never forsaken his people in time of need. I promise you he will not do so now. There will be no peace in Atlantis until we have broken the power of this evil usurper, Unger Khan. Hopeless, exalted one. Our men are outnumbered. The city is about to fall. Have faith. I am pleased to report that Sheriff's army has been driven within the walls of the sacred city. Good. Recall the troops. With those religious fanatics under control, I'll have no more interference with my plans to destroy the upper world. The fool. When you do succeed in sending them to the bottom of the sea, Atlantis will rise once more to its former place in the sun and you will be ruler of all things. Start the disintegrator. Sinclair is in ruins. Thousands dead. Hospitals grinning. All communication cut off. Red Cross is appealing for doctors. Special trains are rushing supplies to the stricken area. Governor of the state declared martial law, rushing a militia to the scenes of the disaster. Stand by for further announcements. St. Clair? That's only 300 miles from here. Yes, and according to my calculations, another severe shock will occur any moment. Joe, put that counteracting machine board in submarine right away. Do you mean you're going down and try to stop this quake? What a story this will make for my paper. Let me get to a phone. 
Can I come along, Dad? Some other time, Billy. I have something more important for you, Billy. I want you to take a note to the naval base for me. Hurry up, Joe. We've got no time to lose. But, Professor, I, I don't think it's safe to take the submarine down that far. We've got to take that chance. Get those things aboard. Now, quick, give this note to the commanding officer at the naval base. He'll understand. Come on, Joe. I'll give you a hand. This is not an ordinary submarine, Bill. It's propelled by rocket motors, designed by Professor Norton himself. Yes, it's been tested at 2,500 feet, and he's going to try to reach the bottom this time. I'll tell you more about it when I get back. What? Am I going along? You bet I am. Hello. This is Professor Norton's boathouse. Brandy Deep. Hello. 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 Will you shut up? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean you, Professor Norton. I was talking to Sinbad. Huh? Oh, yeah. R right away. Professor Norton says to get the boat ready for a long trip. calculations, we're nearing the spot where the earthquake shocks originate. Prepare to submerge.
500 feet. Good. Another 2,000 feet and I can stop the counteracting ray. We'll never make it. The submarine will be crushed. You can't hold it yourself, Joe. There's no danger. Why, of course not. Oh, you're all mad. If we go any deeper, the submarine will crush like the shell of an egg. Get back there and keep my nose down. We're going through with it. All right. You ask for it. I'll nose her down. I'll send her straight to the bottom. I'll send her to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Lock yourself in. Oh, the poor child. Over the door. <laughs> I hated to do this, but it was the only way I could stop him. He'll be all right in a little while. We're down 7,000 feet. And we're still diving. Do you think it's safe to continue? It's the earthquake detector. I'll stop the counteracting ray while you level the ship off. We're down far enough. Disintegrator. Must be outside interference, Your Majesty. We'll soon find out. So that's what's interfering with my plans. The deep sea craft from the upper world, Your Majesty. Shall I destroy it? Wait. I have a better plan. 
Turn on the magnetic ray and bring them down into Atlantis. Professor Norton. What's happened? I don't know. We're on a level keel, but we're being dragged down by some mysterious force. Younger Khan, a detachment of the Imperial Guard will proceed at once to the inland sea and capture the stranger from the upper world. Captain Hackett? Yes, Jeff. My horse, quickly. Number one patrol, huh? Number one patrol, prepare to move out. Number two! while we investigate this place. Better hide the control box. Now, there's a good place. Yes, that'll do. Do you think we'd better wait for Briny and Sawley? Oh, it's unnecessary. They'll join us as soon as we catch Sinbad the parrot. <laughs> My calculations are wrong. We've come across the lost continent of Atlantis. Why, oh, I can hardly believe it. It must be a mirage, some illusion. Listen. Why, that's no illusion. Those are hoofbeats. Look, soldiers! Keep out of sight. We'll find out if they're friends or enemies. Hey! 
sort of a war tank. and they're heading for the beach. Right, the invisible ray gun will soon stop them. Start the disintegrator. <laughs> 